Now, while things are better in the corridor, we're still experiencing a rapidly growing and diversifying population, about 7% a year. And we welcomed, I think, just over 1,000 new students for the current school year. The required 20-acre parcel of land for an elementary school no longer exists in eastern Prince William. I know, because I, my staff, and the school staff last year worked on inventorying parcels of land. Those that were available were cost prohibitive for site acquisition. In addition, new statewide school proffers that are now in effect, took effect last July, are eliminating any chance that the county could possibly receive a 20-acre parcel of land for a future elementary school in eastern Prince William. At the same time, our town centers and mixed-use developments are increasing and expanding. Is it time to consider the possibility of an urban school, urban elementary and middle school in eastern Prince William? That is the question before us tonight. To help us understand whether we need urban schools before the next one has to be built, whether we have the right county zoning laws in place to accommodate that type of school, whether an urban school, what it might look like or how it might operate, because of course there wouldn't be any fields, recreational sports fields. Would be a roof though. And whether we could afford all of it are all questions that our three panelists have some perspective and will be sharing with us tonight. So allow me to introduce our guests. Each has been requested to speak for about 15 minutes from their perspective, <coughs> to share their ideas, their concerns, and possible approaches to addressing these challenges. I'm going to invite all three to come on up now. I'm going to introduce all three. We're going to give them each 15 minutes. And then we're going to take a break. And then we're going to come back for the second hour of the town hall for a dialogue, for questions and answers. Our first speaker tonight is Chris Price, to my immediate left. Uh, last time we saw Chris, he was the director of planning. And uh, I think it's in order uh, to, uh, uh, to acknowledge that just recently he's been promoted to deputy county executive here in Prince William County. In his prior capacity, he had responsibility for planning and zoning and community development operations. Chris has got 20 years of experience in this type of, uh, in this field, both here in Virginia and in Pennsylvania, and holds a bachelor's degree from Penn State. We won't go there yet, Stu. Oh, we got one. <laughs> and a master's from Old Dominion. Our second speaker on the end of the table there uh, is David Klein. David started his career with Prince William County Schools back in 1989. Does that make it 27? You're going on 28 years? That's correct. Yeah, excellent. Uh, but in 2008, he was appointed Associate Superintendent for Finance and Support Services. And I think what that means is he's responsible for a whole heck of a lot uh, in accommodating our students' needs. Uh, he graduated from the United States Coast Guard Academy and earned his master's degree in business administration from uh, George Washington University. And our third panelist tonight is Grant Ehat. Grant is a partner uh, with Willard Retail, where he directs the acquisition, business development, and anchor leasing activities. And uh, I think that's a recent move for him. And in the preceding 15 years, he was a partner with JBG Realty. And if anybody is not familiar with JBG Realty, it is now the largest mixed-use developer in the National Capital Region. I don't know if that's measured in square foot or value of assets or both, uh, but JBG is very large. And JBG is now the new owner of Potomac Town Center. And JBG is one of the three parties that the Board of Supervisors is now discussing about the possibility of building a new baseball stadium at Potomac Town Center. Uh, Grant received his undergraduate degree from James Madison. Anybody from JMU? No, I guess not. Uh, and is a licensed real estate broker in D.C., Maryland, uh, Virginia, and Pennsylvania. 
So each will speak for about 15 minutes. Then we're going to take a 10-minute break, and then we're going to come back for Q&A.